My name is Gerald Dilliman. I'm the Senior Director of Horticulture at Assiniboine Park Conservancy. So the gardens were meant to be a celebration of the connection between people and plants, but it, it provides for another opportunity, and that's the connection from people to people. When someone comes to any of the gardens here at The Leaf, we want people to feel that they're a part of this, that this is part of um, their community, their place, their home. And it's a place where we can connect and share, because one thing that the community as, as a whole has is a, a connection to plants, a relationship with plants, whether they realize it or not. So where we are right now is, is the seasonal garden. The beauty of this garden is that it changes over the course of the calendar year. And the goal here is not to have everything flowering at once or showcasing at once, but this rolling sequence or choreography, if you will, throughout the season, throughout the year. The other thing too is we're a place where we can show lots of variety, lots of opportunities that, that you can come and see and think, oh, I can do this too. And that's the beauty of gardening. It, it's really universal and accessible. Hi, my name is Anna. I'm the Manager of Education and Programs here at Assiniboine Park. The process of designing the Indigenous People's Garden took many years. The Water Node in particular is a place where there's sort of serenity and it's really beautiful. The first thing you'll notice are the cedar spheres. There are 13 of them which represent the 13 moons in a season. As an urban Indigenous woman, having this space here uh, makes uh, ceremony and gathering accessible to us. And I really hope that community members are able to gather here and that we can celebrate our beautiful culture and get to know each other a bit better. Uh, my name is Mike DeGroote and I'm the chef at the Park Cafe here at Assiniboine Park. So right now we're sitting in the kitchen gardens. All the plants grown in this particular garden uh, it all has a focus on food. There are hundreds of varieties of different things being grown in here right now. So after all the food here gets harvested, it comes to us in the kitchens, either at the park cafe or at the pavilion. The garden dictates what we're going to do with it, and as cooks and as chefs, that's really, really exciting. It really lets us be creative and makes making great food really easy. We're getting produce out of here that tastes the most like how it should. A tomato, after it's been shipped from Mexico and been in a truck for three weeks, and it, by the time it gets to your kitchen table, it doesn't taste as much like a tomato as it could. Uh, we're often working with these products now in the peak of their freshness, uh, so they're coming to us just perfect. So to get something and be like, wow, like this went from stock to table in about half an hour, and you know, it hasn't even had a chance to cool down yet. It's not an opportunity a lot of cooks get, um, and I'm really grateful and really, Really fortunate to have that opportunity. The next phase is really that connector piece to all of the gardens, which is the leaf itself. And this includes four distinct zones called the tropical, the Mediterranean, the butterfly, and the display biome. And what makes them so different from the outdoor experience is where these plants come from. And so the goal is that we're not repeating the visitor experience from outside to inside, but actually enhancing it by sort of broadening that experience. And again, it goes back to those community connections of, of people who recognize plants. And maybe if people aren't um, from Canada and they're from somewhere else in the world, that they'll see something that they recognize, that they grew up with, that they're familiar with, that they have a connection or a story to. And then there's the opportunity to share those as well.